Who? What's up, you guys? I'm Chibi Joe, and I am here to talk about a certain magical index, season two. This one probably had the best ending. I'm gonna say that right now, in terms of like just absolute character development and things like that. This was probably the strongest one out of the three seasons, and especially for my favorite character, Accelerator. And the only thing I really have against this season is that it still continues those tropes that was in the first... It's almost like a running gag uh, from the Three Stooges, except with the Three Stooges, they found unique, different ways of doing it, and this one they really didn't. Uh, except for one time, Accelerator walks in to the girls bathing and they're all like kind of mad at first and he's like well if you would just close and lock the door this wouldn't have happened and then one of them's like yeah okay you got a point and like he's not flustered by it he's not angered by it it's just like really just like just kind of played off real chill and i like that i thought it was funny i actually thought that was funnier than whenever all the bad stuff happens to uh <clears throat> to toma but yeah, like this season was really good. Had a lot of intense moments, really amazing fights. The final like three episodes are just so badass. Again, I'm going to try to kind of slow down on spoilers because I really want you guys to watch it. Um, the whole like story of it all is that like, the world of magic and Ag Academy City, they're, you know, they're really starting to get a lot more tension, um, particularly with the, uh, with the Vatican, the Roman Catholic sector, and, um, Toma, like, really just doesn't know what to do, um, and it was, it, it was really good, and, like, when it split over to Accelerator's side, and he's trying to figure out what to do with, um, with all the stuff that he has to go through now, since he's now becoming more and more of a good guy, he's trying to figure out how to be a good guy, um... And, like, he keeps on trying to be a bad guy. And so, like, he keeps on saying, like, that's not how you be, that's not how you be a villain. Let me show you how to be a villain. And a lot of that stuff is really cool. Again, the, um, the interactions between the characters, when they're not doing the silly tropes of, let's all make Toma's life miserable. I felt that the uh, interactions actually were pretty genuine and very well written. I guess the thing that really aggravates me about this show is that overall, it's a well written show. If they would stop focusing on all these useless tropes. And. It's very aggravating whenever you, you have. A show that could be amazing and they keep on doing the same stuff that made the first season really bad. And I don't know. Well, not really bad. I think I rated it a six. And I mean, that's what I rate this one. Spoiler alert. I rate this one a six too because I really don't think it added um, enough for me to make it a seven. Because again, they, they put all of these running freaking jokes in there. And it's really bad that I actually really don't care that they have um, more girls added to the harem of Toma. I actually don't mind that. I think it's because I'm so used to it that it doesn't bother me anymore. It's just like, okay, yeah, this is part of the story. Um, But it's so, I mean, it's fun. It's a fun little show. I mean... There are a lot of things um, that annoy me uh, that I've already spoken of at length. 
but just the the sheer power of some of these characters that are introduced like there's the the I think they were called like the hand of god or something like that the right hand and uh they're all they're all named after the the elements and you meet uh one character named Vento and the fight against Vento is so freaking intense and it's so magnificent um and like as the story goes on you really just feel bad for Toma not because of all these girls and stuff but because of his power uh there's a character that he would love to give a hug to and he can't because because of how she was created she'll be deleted she would disappear and that's like the only reason I really feel bad for Toma um I feel like there's a lot more they could have done that they didn't do um But it's fine. Uh, the next season, um, a lot of people don't like. That's what I'm going to be talking about next. The next season, a lot of people don't like, and I don't know why, because it actually is not that bad. Um, I'll go into that when I talk about it, because I finished the series, and I've actually even watched the next show uh, at the point of recording this, and I'm, I'm wanting to get these all recorded, uh, hopefully tonight. Uh, that way I can start watching it. Um, I can have these all edited and things and just upload them as I need. But, like, there there were some story parts that really confused me. Um, I honestly, I think I mentioned this last time. This show could have used some filler episodes of... You know, a little bit of cool down. You know, just to have some character development. But we didn't get that. Um, and that's fine. We don't need to have that. It just would have been nice. It would have felt more complete. Uh, because you really didn't have any time to really study the characters. It was just like... One second, two second, three second, four second. Like, like, you know, you're going from arc to arc to arc to arc. And I think just slowing it down. I, I heard a lot of people say uh, Scientific Railgun, which I don't know if I'm going to watch because I'm kind of burnt out on the A Certain Magical Index universe. Um, so I don't know if I'll watch that. Maybe down the road I will. Uh, but for right now, I'm not going to. Um, my favorite character is definitely, you know, def my favorite female character is definitely Railgun, and, um, I wish there was more, I'm what, I have a very dangerous mentality of, I really want to make everything have a little bit more of a romance aspect, I like romance, um, I think it, if used correctly, um, it could be a really good driving force for your characters. Uh, even if it's an action anime. Um, yeah, like, it, it's, it could have used that. It didn't, it didn't use it, but it could have used it. And I think it kind of suffered without having that. Like, and you get that a lot with a lot of anime. Uh, Sword Art Online is very notorious for it when you have, like, all these girls, like, one guy. And, I, you know, it, it's indiscriminate of who the guy likes. Um, I would have personally chose Toma to be with, you know, to focus on Railgun or even, um... Oh, shit, what's her name? I turn on my anime list for a reason. Because I forget character names all the time and it annoys all of my friends and families and loved ones um 
No, even though I do like Himagami, that's not who I'm thinking of. Really, that happened in season two? Yeah, and then Last Order, amazing character. What is her name? I always like, when I watch an anime, because I love writing fan fiction so much, I will think about, okay, so what, what would I do? And I think I'm a pretty decent um, fan fiction writer. I have a few, I have a few followers on fanfiction.net. I don't know if I should be proud of that. But I do. Kanzaki. Kaori Kanzaki. I love her. Now, I've never watched this anime in the English. Um, even now. Um, I don't want to. Because I think I... I it's really bad to say, but I really don't like a lot of the voice actors that are in it. And I don't want to hear their voice because it's like, I think you are a piece of shit and you shouldn't have the, this work. Um, it's wrong of me to say that. And I'm sure if I was a bigger YouTuber, I would be flagged for it, but that's fine. I, I'm perfectly fine with people not liking me. Um, I'm, I'm more fine with people who just like listening to my opinions, and if they disagree with it, that's great. I actually like people who disagree with me a lot more than people who constantly agree with me. Because, one, it makes conversations a lot easier. But anyways, we're kind of going off topic. Um, I think some of the casting choices were good. Um, I, the Japanese dub is just amazing. Um... Even the, the goofier parts, you just feel the emotion in it. And one thing you do learn when you watch a lot of the Japanese dub of things, you kind of learn what's good Japanese voice acting and what is bad Japanese voice acting. Even if you don't know, even if you don't understand Japanese, you kind of can kind of feel like, okay, that one kind of fell a little flat. But other times, like, especially when Toma gets pissed, uh, Atsushi Abe is amazing at what he does with Toma Kamisho. Um, the music was absolutely fa was, was fantastic. The intros, uh, season two probably had my favorite intro. Um, let me see if I can find it, and I'll kind of mention what it is. I mean, like, just the way it sounded, and I'm going to avoid playing it, of course, because, uh, well, <laughs> for obvious reasons, it would not go well, because I do not feel like being flagged today. There we go. Let's, what is this song? It's the first opening. Apparently it's called No Butts and it's by Mommy Kawada. And I definitely recommend listening to it. Uh, even casually. And just the way that the intro plays out, it really goes with the music. So, and that was the first opening of, of Magical Index 2. And, uh, yeah, I really enjoyed the visuals of it. You know, you get, you know, you, it focuses on your main characters, you know, your four main characters that's going to be focused on, and then there you go, you're off to the races. No, like, specialty, no, like, over-the-top visuals, I, at least I feel like. It just looks nice. And, uh... So, yeah. That's all I really have for you guys today. 
Um, like I said, I definitely recommend this. It's, you know, it's a six. Um, I, and I'm probably going to say that whenever I don't like something, it'll just be a different recommendation then. But I hope you guys enjoyed and I'll see you guys next time. Have an awesome day and a good night.